Right. Let's begin our service this morning by singing hymn number 49. Dear Lord and Father of us all, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives thy service find. In deeper reverence praise. Hymn number 49. The scriptural this morning will be given by Pilar from New York. Acts. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continue his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being falling into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread, and eaten, and took a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comfort.
We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Mother God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, Truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 195. Not what I am, O Lord, but what thou art. That, that alone can be my soul's true rest. Thy love, not mine, bids fear and doubt depart, and stills the tumult of my troubled breast. Hymn number 195.
Welcome to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed the one this morning, be sure to catch it on our website. It was a really good one. Also, every Sunday at 11 o'clock, we have a Sunday school for children that is conducted via a teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can attend. Every Wednesday evening at 8.15, we have a testimony meeting where you can hear healings, testimonies of healings, and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And for all of our services, we have a nursery available for the very, very young ones. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube. And you can find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website, our YouTube channel, or from your telephone by a teleconference number that we provide. There's an article on our website featured on the cover page that I would like to encourage you to read, entitled, Victory Over Adversity, by Gutrud D. Hauck. Excellent article. If you have trouble gaining the victory over any adversity, read this article. We will have another Bible study session next Saturday at 10 a.m., so check the website for questions, and please join us next Saturday at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained just by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Lil. Page 664, Curing Better Than Enduring. For eight years, I was a great sufferer from weak lungs, and after being treated by 10 different physicians in the states of Illinois, Missouri, and Colorado, I was told there was no hope of my recovery from what they pronounced tuberculosis which was hereditary, my father having been afflicted with it. I was greatly emaciated and hardly able to be about. My general condition was aggravated by what the doctors said was paralysis of the bowels. Three physicians so diagnosed it at different times and assured my husband that I could never get more than temporary relief. This indeed I found difficult to obtain in spite of my almost frantic efforts. At times I was nearly insane from suffering and after eight years of doctoring, I found myself steadily growing worse. For four years I did not have a normal action of the bowels and it was only by extreme effort and by resort to powerful drugs or mechanical means with resultant suffering that any action whatever could be brought about. I had heard nothing of the curative power of Christian science and only to oblige a friend, I went one night about three years ago to one of their midweek testimonial meetings in Boulder, Colorado. I was much impressed by what I heard there and determined at once 
to investigate this strange religion in the hope that it might have something good for me. I bought the test textbook Science and Health, and from the first I found myself growing stronger and better, both physically and mentally, as I re acquired a better understanding and endeavored to put into practice what I learned. In one week, I was able to get along better without drugs than I had for years with them. Before three months had passed, I was better than I had been any time in my life, for I had always suffered more or less from bowel trouble. Since that time, I have taken no medicine whatever and rely wholly upon Christian science. My lungs are now sound, my bowels normally active, my general health excellent, and I'm able to endure without fatigue tasks that before would have prostrated me. The study of our textbook was the sole means of my healing. L. M. St. C. Medicin, Canal Zone, Panama. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page four of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, are sin, disease, and death real? The golden text is from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The responsive reading is from Psalms. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Give, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Praise, Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Fairly from Maryland, we'll read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Psalms. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. James. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, 
and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Mark, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And there came a leper unto him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith unto him, I will. Be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And Jesus enters into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shalt not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Luke. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came up fear on all. And they glorify God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, 
this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The Bible declares, all things were made by Him, the divine Word, and without Him was not anything made that was made. This is the eternal verity of divine science. If sin, sickness, and death were understood as nothingness, they would disappear. As vapor melts before the sun, so evil would vanish before the reality of good. One must hide the other. How important, then, to choose good as the reality. If sin, sickness, and death are as real as life, truth, and love, then they must all be from the same source. God must be their author. Now, Jesus came to destroy sin, sickness, and death. Yet the scriptures aver, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Is it possible, then, to believe that the evils which Jesus lived to destroy are real, 
or the offspring of the divine will? In an age of ecclesiastical despotism, Jesus introduced the teaching and practice of Christianity, affording the proof of Christianity's truth and love. But to reach his example and to test its unerring science according to his rule, healing sickness, sin, and death, a better understanding of God as divine principle, love, rather than personality or the man, Jesus, is required. Jesus established what he said by demonstration, thus making his acts of higher importance than his words. He proved what he taught. This is the science of Christianity. Jesus proved the principle which heals the sick and casts out error to be divine. Few, however, except his students, understood in the least his teachings and their glorious proofs, namely, that life, truth, and love, the principle of this unacknowledged science, destroy all error, evil, disease, and death. The prayer that reforms the sinner and heals the sick is an absolute faith that all things are possible to God, a spiritual understanding of Him, an unselfed love. Regardless of what another may say or think on this subject, I speak from experience. Prayer, watching, and working, combined with self-immolation, are God's gracious means for accomplishing whatever has been successfully done for the Christianization and health of mankind. Prayer cannot change the science of being, but it tends to bring us into harmony with it. Goodness attains the demonstration of truth. A request that God will save us is not all that is required. The mere habit of pleading with the divine mind, as one pleads with a human being, perpetuates the belief in God as humanly circumscribed, an error which impedes spiritual growth. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace, expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds the longing to be better and holier, expressed in daily watchfulness and in striving to assimilate more of the divine character, will mold and fashion us anew until we awake in His likeness. Audible prayer can never do the works of spiritual understanding which regenerates, but silent prayer, watchfulness, and devout obedience enable us to follow Jesus' example. Prayer is not to be used as a confessional to cancel sin. Such an error would impede true religion. Sin is forgiven only as it is destroyed by Christ, truth and life. 
If prayer nourishes the belief that sin is canceled and that man is made better merely by praying, prayer is an evil. He grows worse who continues in sin because he fancies himself forgiven. An apostle says that the Son of God, Christ, came to destroy the works of the devil. We should follow our divine exemplar and seek the destruction of all evil works, error and disease included. It must be clear to you that sickness is no more the reality of being than is sin. This mortal dream of sickness, sin, and death should cease through Christian science. Include moral as well as physical belief in your efforts to destroy error. Cast out all manner of evil. Preach the gospel to every creature. Speak the truth to every form of error. Tumors, ulcers, tubercles, inflammation, pain, deformed joints are waking dream shadows, dark images of mortal thought which flee before the light of truth. A moral question may hinder the recovery of the sick. Lurking error, lust, envy, revenge, malice, or hate will perpetuate or even create the belief in disease. Errors of all sorts tend in this direction. Your true course is to destroy the foe and leave the field to God, life, truth, and love, remembering that God and His ideas alone are real and harmonious. The scriptures inform us that man is made in the image and likeness of God. Man is incapable of sin, sickness, and death. The real man cannot depart from holiness, nor can God, by whom man is evolved, engender the capacity or freedom to sin. Insist vehemently on the great fact which covers the whole ground that God, Spirit, is all, and that there is none beside Him. There is no disease. Death is but another phase of the dream that existence can be material. Nothing can interfere with the harmony of being, nor end the existence of man in science. God, life, truth, and love make man undying. Immortal mind, governing all, must be acknowledged as supreme in the physical realm, so-called, as well as in the spiritual. Called to the bed of death, what material remedy has man when all such remedies have failed? Spirit is his last resort, but it should have been his first and only resort. The dream of death must be mastered by mind, here or hereafter. Thought will waken from its own material declaration, I am dead, 
to catch this trumpet word of truth, there is no death, no inaction, diseased action, overaction, nor reaction. God has set his signet upon science, making it coordinate with all that is real and only with that which is harmonious and eternal. Sickness, sin, and death, being inharmonious, do not originate in God, nor belong to his government. His law, rightly understood, destroys them. Let us have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 31. <clears throat> the words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love, hymn number 31.
the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was spoken, that it might be heard. In the beginning was the Word. It already existed. At the beginning spoken, that it might be heard and thus occurred the universe and Can the impossible occur? Does the lifeless ever live? Does it have anything to add to love? Or give to the expression of the word? No, that would be absurd. Nothing's turned it upside down. We're just hearing it all wrong. In the beginning was the word, and all Let's now sing hymn number 296. <clears throat> Rouse ye, soldiers of the cross, and lift your banner high. Servants of a mighty cause, put sloth and slumber by. Rouse ye, rouse ye, face the foe. Rise to conquer death and sin. On with Christ to victory go. O oh, side with God and win. Hymn number 296.
will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.